Aristotle was in training to become a tailor. Now, he wasn't an apprentice, but he wasn't yet a master either. He was a journeyman, so called because they would travel around doing odd bits of jobs for people to make a little bit of money, but also to build up their skills and experience so that they may become a master. Now, Harry was mending dresses in the home of a young mother. The mother was busy around the house, cleaning up the kitchen, preparing dinner, and looking after the baby. Now Harry had never seen such a temperamental species of baby in all of his life. The poor thing in the cot, it was screaming every moment. Before Harry had even come in the door, he could hear it bellowing and roaring. It wouldn't even stop to take a breath. And he asked the mother, what's wrong with the child? Has it been hurt? Is it sick? And the mother said, I don't know. He's been like that all week. The doctor says there's nothing wrong with him, but no matter what I do, if I feed him, if I bathe him, if I rock him to sleep, everything, he just keeps crying. He'll pause for a moment to eat, but when he's done, he'll wail again. I don't know what to do with him. And so, the two of them, they kept working, despite the incessant howling of the baby. But eventually, the mother, she had to go down to the well to fetch some water. And not long after she'd left, the baby stopped crying. And in fact, the baby stood up in the crib. And he looked over at Harry with a very knowing kind of expression. And he said, Do you have a smoke there, pal? And Harry was shocked and amazed. But eventually he patted himself down and he found a pipe and he found some tobacco and he handed it over to the baby and the baby lights it up and starts smoking. And he climbs out of the crib straight onto the wall, up the wall and into the rafters where it sits. Ah, cheers there, bud. Lovely. Don't you be saying anything though. Don't you be spoiling this on me. Not a word to your one when she comes back in, right? And Harry, he's fairly taken aback at this point, but he says, Oh no, no, of course, of course not, of course not at all. I wouldn't say a word. But you're not a human baby, are you? Ah, no, 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 not at all, not at all. Not the babies back under the hill where I used to be. No, no, I'm one of the, one of the fairy folk, I'm, a, I'm one of the she. And Harry, he says, well, you know, I thought you might have been, I thought you might have been climbing straight up the wall and smoking and everything. I, I didn't think... It was likely that you were an ordinary child. And so the two of them, they had a little bit of a chat and Harry got back to his work and the changeling got back to smoking. But soon after they heard footsteps approaching, they knew it was the mother. So the changeling gives Harry back his pipe and climbs back down the wall from the rafters into the crib and before the door even opens, he starts wailing and wailing and crying unceasingly again. A Harry, he kept his word at first. He said nothing to the mother. He kept on at his work and when the dresses were mended, he took his payment and he spoke to the mother. Listen, um, I have a, can I have a word with you? Outside, please. Just, just, just a little chat. Just, I need to talk to you about something. So the two of them go outside the door, 
The baby's still wailing inside. And Harry says, I know why your child's crying so much. It's because that's not your child at all. It's a changeling. Now listen, I've heard about what you're supposed to do when this happens. You should take him down to the river and throw him in. And then you'll get your child back. And the mother, she, she didn't know what to say. She kind of mumbled a, a thank you to Harry and she went inside and thought about what he'd said. And she sat down next to the baby's crib and she fed the child and he stopped crying momentarily while he ate but resumed it again immediately after. And the more she thought about what Harry had told her, the more she thought he was right. And so, the next day, she packed up a basket and all while she was doing it, she was talking loudly and deliberately about going to visit her mother and how she was going to bring the baby to visit her mother and bring her a nice lovely lunch and that maybe her mother would know how to help the baby stop crying, how to make the baby happy again. So she packs up the food in the basket and she puts the baby on top, sitting on top among all the food in the basket. And she sets off down the road along the path. And all the while, the baby is screaming and bellowing and shouting. But at the same time, he's looking around. His eyes darting here and there, very keenly aware of his surroundings. And the mother can see this. She knows. She knows that the baby can tell this is not the path to her mother's house. This is the road to the river. Eventually, she gets to the bridge. And just as she's crossing, the baby sits up and he shouts I know what you're bleeding up to you're not getting rid of me that easy and just as he shouts this she throws the basket into the river and the baby he pulls out one of the long wooden spoons she had left in the basket and he uses it to paddle down the river fuck you you fucking shite hawk I fucking hate you you are a shite mother anyway shouted the baby as he paddled away down the river. The mother, she didn't know what to do about this. She didn't know what to say. She didn't know what to think. Harry had told her she'd get her baby back, throwing the changeling in the river, but there was no sign of it. So she just went home, glad to at least be rid of the changeling. But when she got inside, she heard a laugh, a familiar laugh, one she hadn't heard in over a week. It was the laugh of her little baby. She was delighted to have him back.